Okay, welcome to our team webinar for this week. I am been really excited about this call. This is something that I scheduled months ago because I had been hearing in the network and from a couple other coaches just raving about this guy, Josh Coates. And I'm thinking, who is this guy? I um, hadn't heard of him. All I was hearing were about the results that he was bringing in other people's lives as he was mentoring them and working with them. So I'm thinking, I've got to, I've got to learn more about Josh Coates. So I was able to listen in on a webinar that he hosted and was just blown away at the truth bombs that he gave, the clarity in which he words things and lays it out there so that people can comprehend it and absorb it and make changes in their lives. So I put my my card in there and said, you know, let me get in as quickly as we can. And so I'm really excited that you guys are tuning in because you guys are in for a treat. Um, Josh Coates, I know, is married. Um, he has a kid, so he's a husband and a dad. And he is a coach with the John C. Max Maxwell team. So I am going to turn the time over to him and let him introduce himself a little bit more from there. Um, but you guys are in for a huge treat, so I hope you have your paper, your pens, and that you shut down your social media, turn off Facebook, put your phone on airplane mode, and just really be in this moment so that you can get the most of it, because you guys are you guys are lucky that we have him on this call. So, Josh, I am unmuting you, and I'm going to turn the time over to you. Awesome. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you, Bridget. I appreciate it so much. What a cool introduction. That is probably the greatest compliment anyone could ever give me is I was hearing about the results people were having. Um, I, always, I always say with my one-on-one -on -one clients and my training groups, if there's no homework, we just had a good chat. You know, like, and, and I like to chat. I'm a pretty outgoing guy. I have the uh, of gab, as some people might say. I, I love to talk, but at the end of the day, I don't give a crap about having as much as I do about getting results. I want to help people get results. So, so that's awesome that people are saying that. I got a chance to meet one of the corporate mentors who actually just got certified by the John Maxwell team. She got smart and said she needed to come join the dark side. And, and, and she said, I, I feel like I need to meet you. I keep hearing you're, you're teaching a bunch of stuff. And I, I hear you're like, you know, getting people to like sign up as discounts instead of like challengers. And I was like, that's probably the weirdest thing I've ever been known for. I hope that's not what I'm known for because that's like literally not a part. I mean, that's like one tiny little tip that I've given, but I'd much rather hear that people are getting results than, hey, people are signing discount coaches. That was not a very good compliment, but that's okay. That's okay. Maybe she'll hear me on a webinar later and she'll change her mind. It's all good. Um, so I am on the John Maxwell team. I'm actually on the Presidential Advisory Council for the John Maxwell team. I um, have a business called Legacy Leadership where I do life coaching, I do leadership training, and I do public speaking. So today we're going to do kind of a mixture. Everything I do is kind of a mixture of tr speaking and training. See, speaking, I like the way John Maxwell says it. He says a motivational speaker is just trying to get people to feel good. But a motivational teacher tries to get people to do good. There's a really, really big difference between feeling good and doing good. Man, I was feeling so good when Coldplay was going, man. Uh, I actually played in rock bands for years, and Coldplay is like one of my jams, dude. I uh, freaking loves me some Coldplay. I feel really good when I listen to Coldplay. You know, I put the windows down when I'm driving my awesome dad uh, minivan, my Honda Odyssey with my tinted windows, and I'm feeling like a rock star. But it doesn't make me do good. So today, I want to make you feel good about doing good. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Let's, let's, let's feel good about doing good and understand that tomorrow, maybe the next day and maybe next week, it might not actually feel that good anymore, but we're still going to keep doing good so we can get the things we really want in life. A few months into, um, I've, I've been on the John Maxwell team for two and a half years, okay? And one of the first calls that I got on, we have these things called certification calls that are kind of like for you guys, your team calls, or maybe even like the national wake up call. And I was on and Paul Martinelli, who's the president of the John Maxwell team was speaking that night. And he said these words that changed my life forever. He said the simple, simple phrase. He said, protect momentum at all 
costs. Protect, write that down. Write it down in all caps, highlight it in pink, yellow, green, orange, purple, any colors you got there. Protect momentum at all costs. This is the most powerful thing I'd ever heard, not because I even knew what the heck it meant, but something about it just grabbed me. And I just knew that I needed to hang on to these words like for dear life. Is any, have you ever heard anything and you're just like, I don't really know what to do with this yet, but I know there's going to come a time in my life where I'm going to need this really, really, really bad. And so it's like you like write it on the tablet of your heart and it's like, I would go around saying this, protect momentum at all costs, protect momentum at all costs. Now let me set this up for you so you, you know a little bit of, of how ridiculous it was that I was even ready to grab on to these words because when you say protect momentum at all costs, you're kind of assuming, oh wow, I bet you had a lot of momentum, your business was probably doing great, you know, things were probably doing awesome, right? You were probably like an elite coach as we would like, that's like beach body language, right? Probably were like this like rock star or something, you were like, yeah, protect momentum, yeah, I'm gonna do this. No, it wasn't really like that at all. See, what had happened was um, I had been detailing cars for about eight years. Um, that was my day gig was detailing cars. I actually played in rock bands since I was about 15. I'm 32 now. It was about 29 when I gave up my, uh, my rock star dreams. Um, but I had been playing in rock bands and detailing cars and basically hating my day job. Anybody ever hated a day job? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. I got this new t-shirt. It says out grind, out hustle, out work. I got another one from the same company that says nine to five is for the week. I can't wait to shoot some videos wearing that t-shirt. But I was stuck in this job, okay, where I was out hustling. I was out working. I was out grinding. The only problem is there was no benefits to out working everyone. There are no benefits to outgrind other than just feeling good at the end of the day that you work harder than everyone else. Anybody ever been there? That's an awesome feeling, isn't it? And the only time I ever heard from my boss was when I got a complaint, when someone was upset about the detail that I'd spent four hours on, which was usually something like my minivan that had freaking Chick-fil-A in like every single row of the car. <laughs> I'm, I love Chick-fil-A guys. Uh, we'll find a way to fit that in the meal plan because Chick-fil-A is good stuff. And, and, and it was always the dirtiest, grossest cars that would complain and that their car didn't look like an Audi when you were done with it. Right. And guys, I, I hated this job. I hated it so bad, but I loved music and I was playing music on the weekends and we were got to the point where we were doing some touring we were this close to taking one of our songs and going to the radio with it and basically putting some money with it and hoping to get some serious radio play but unfortunately um, my youngest son Paxton was actually born with a heart defect and so by the age of three he was he was almost three years old and, and we had just got news that he was going to need his third open heart surgery He'd had one when he was about six weeks old, another one when he was six months old. And then we thought we were like pretty solid. You know, we're people of faith. We thought everything was good. Everything was going to be great. Right before his third birthday, we got news that he was going to need a third open heart surgery. And it, man, it was hard. It was, I mean, it was hard every single time, but, but each time it's just as hard, if not harder than the last, because this time, you know what he had to go through and you know, you're about to have to watch all of that again. The first time sucks, but you have no idea what's coming. I mean, you're just like literally just winging it. Every time after that, you know what happens. You know that after the surgery, your little boy is going to swell up to almost twice his body weight because of the reaction that your body has to something so traumatic. What your body does is it actually just releases fluids like crazy. It's basically in panic mode. Your body goes into absolute panic mode and starts releasing fluids and you see your little baby boy swell up to almost twice his normal size. And you see 20 different machines hooked up to your little boy. And you know at any time if one of those machines goes haywire, you're screwed. I mean, those 20 machines are literally keeping your son breathing. They're keeping fluids in his body. They're trying to get the bad fluids out of his body. He's got one tube. Sorry if I'm, I'm grossing anyone out trying to eat lunch, but he's got one tube going into his side that is literally just draining fluids out of him to try to get him back to normal. And the whole time, 
And this is no fun, obviously, no fun at all. But the whole time I'm holding his hand with one hand, okay? One side of my brain thinking about my little boy, thinking about what he's going through right now, thinking about trying to be that positive vibe for him, trying to pray for him, whatever that is. In the other half of my brain, this is probably the worst part, guys. The other half of my brain is thinking, how are we going to pay the bills? What are we going to do? My day job is not paying me to be here. My day job doesn't give a crap about the fact that my kid's in the hospital. In fact, they didn't offer paid time at all. We didn't offer paid time off at my job. And I asked, I said, hey, this is like the third time this is happening. I've worked for you guys for like eight years. Is there any way you could just do something for me while I have to take a few weeks off to be with my kid? I'll talk to the owner about it, but I really doubt it because if you did it for you, you'd have to do it for everybody else. Really? Because everybody else has a son with, that's had three open heart surgeries. Okay, I get it, right? Nothing. So I'm sitting here afraid for my own son's life thinking about money. The last thing you want to have on your mind, right? And as a dad, I'm feeling like the biggest piece of crap in the world for even thinking about money. But I had to. It wasn't just going to show up. Bills weren't just going to pay themselves. I had to figure out some way. And it was in that moment that I realized, Josh, something's got to change. Something has got to change. You have got to find a way to make it to where money is no longer an issue. To where if something like this happens in the future, money is not on your mind. You're not thinking about your stupid job and you're not thinking about no stupid money. You've got to find a way to create a life where money is no longer on your mind. And that was tricky for me because I had no idea how you could do that, guys. I, I grew up in a family full of preachers and, and, and not the kind you see on TV that make lots of money. I'm talking the old school poor preachers. That's the kind of preachers my family was. We didn't have money, you know. We shopped clearance racks. We, um, I remember one year, I think it was, was it seventh grade, which is a pretty pivotal time, especially um, for, I don't know, I guess, I guess anyone in, in America or North America. Seventh grade is like that time everyone gets weird and you're just trying not to be the weirdest one, right? And I remember my dad saying, guys, I'm really sorry, but we only have 40 bucks to spend on your shoes this year. And I was just like, $40. And I, re- and I remember, like now as an adult looking back, I feel horrible about it. But I remember freaking out on my dad. Like, dad, what in the world am I supposed to get with $40? You can't get no Air Max with $40 Air Max. Like, that, like that's really important in life, Josh. But as a seventh grader, that was, right? Because I was insecure. And I, did, I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to be, I was already the odd kid out because we had to listen to Christian music. I don't know if, if anyone on here relates to this, but we were not allowed to listen to secular music. Some of you are going, what the heck is secular music? Good question. When you grow up in a super, super, super religious home, you're not allowed to listen to anything unless it's Christian, which is another way of saying you're not allowed to listen to good music, basically. We weren't allowed to watch movies that were PG-13. Like, I'm, I can't, I'm not making this up, guys. This is real life. And so I was already the odd one out because I, I never knew what anyone was talking about, right? Like, couldn't watch TV, couldn't listen to, like, the radio. I had to literally, like, I would go over to friend's house and, like, listen to music so I'd know what the heck everyone was, like, what's Nirvana? What, what is this Nirvana that everyone's talking about? Grunge? What is this? Like, I would have to go to my friend's house to figure all this stuff out. So I was already insecure. I was already the weird kid. And here I am going off on my dad, who's working his butt off to try to provide for us because I was embarrassed that I was going to have to show up for school in some less than cool shoes, right? I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know how to create wealth. I didn't know how to create success. But I knew I had to find a way. I was done with this. I was absolutely done with watching my family suffer because I, me right here, taking responsibility, had not figured out a way to create a better life. That right there is the number, that was the first step, guys. The first step to creating the life you really want is to take responsibility for the fact that you haven't done it yet. That's a tough pill to swallow. 
but to realize right now, wherever you're at, whatever struggles you're going through, obviously there are some struggles you can't control, like my son being born with a heart defect, but I would say 95% of the struggles we have in life, you can control and you just haven't. And most of you, it's because you haven't owned up to it yet. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but how many times have we said, I just can't hit success club because nobody's buying. The economy is down. Haven't you heard numbers are down in the whole company? It's all a bunch of BS, guys. You're making excuses instead of taking responsibility for the life that you want. I just don't have a following like Bridget does. Well, I just, I don't have this. So I can't, I, I don't have time. I don't have energy. Blah, 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 blah. All I hear is I'm blaming someone else for the success I'm not willing to create. The first step is saying, I have not done what it takes. All of us can do, it's a matter of will you do. And I decided that day I, I needed to make a change. Talked to the wife about it, she was in total agreement. She could not wait for me to be home on the weekends instead of traveling with the band. And so I quit the band and I had no idea what I was going to do, guys. No idea. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't have like a five-year plan. I didn't have nothing. The only thing I had was a desire for something better. And so I said, you know what, Josh, you detail cars all day. You listen to eight hours worth of music all day because that's what you love is music. Why not instead listen to eight hours of podcasts a day? And so. I went to the podcast store on, on my iPhone and I just went absolutely nuts. Download, 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 download. I mean, every single thing I could possibly find. And I spent the next three to six, probably six months listening to about six hours of podcasts every single day. Through that, I found a passion. I mean, a passion for personal development. I was like, dude, I don't know what the, I don't know what, the, I didn't even know it was called personal development, guys. I had no idea. I, did, I didn't know all these like tag words. I was like, man, this is just, I just love learning, man. Learning is just awesome. Like that's the only way I knew how to say it was like learning. I didn't know what it was. And then I started to realize, man, I wonder if this is something that I could do with my life is, is like podcasts or something. So I actually, um, I actually started my own podcast. It was like, pff, I'm just going to get on here and just talk about the crap that I'm learning. I don't know if anyone's going to listen. I don't know if anyone's going to care, but I'm just going to try. And then one day I came across this podcast that had John Maxwell on it. Now, growing up in a Christian world, John Maxwell had actually been a pastor for many, many, many years. So he's highly respected in the church world, even though he is not necessarily like a, a faith teacher per se. And I remember, I was like, all right, I'll check this out, you know, and I listened to that podcast and I was kind of pissed off because I realized this dude had stole my dream. This guy was doing the thing. See, I didn't know about this whole personal, I didn't know there was a whole world. I didn't know there was like a personal development world. Like I'd never gone, I had never gone to Barnes and Noble and gone to the book section. I always went back to the music section because I could listen to free music. That's, that's the only thing I was doing at Barnes and Noble was getting Starbucks and listening to music. In fact, I probably played several acoustic shows at Barnes and Noble and probably never noticed that there were books there or just thought that they were for silly, stupid people that had nothing better to do, right? And I'm going, this guy has built a career out of helping people? Like that's a, that, that's a thing like that really exists. And I fell in love. I was mad that he stole my dream, but then I was kind of excited that someone had paved the path for me. It'd probably make it a little easier. A few months later, I saw an advertisement that there was actually a John Maxwell team. There was a certification you could go through. And I was just like, are you, are you freaking kidding me? Not only is this guy doing what I want, but he's training people too. As soon as I could, I signed up for that. It was a decent chunk of change. Fortunately, we were really poor, so we got really good tax returns. So I was able to use my tax return to put a down payment on my certification. Now, here's what had happened over the next year, okay? Over the next year of joining the John Maxwell team, you would think having a mentor like John Maxwell, okay, having his tools, 
his resources. By the way, I can literally take one of his books. I'm, I'm, I'm licensed to take this book and teach right out of it word for word if I wanted to and charge people money for it. Isn't that pretty awesome? I think somebody might have got unmuted. There's some weird tunnel noise going on. It's always the people that get unmuted that have the weird background noises. It's never like a quiet person. And um, you would think with all of those resources, man, my business would just, poof, I would just take off, right? Plus, I'd played in bands on and off, so surely I know lots of people. Surely I've, you know, we actually did a lot of promoting for our band on social uh, media, so surely I know how to leverage that and use that. You want to know what happened in my first year of business? I signed two clients for my one-on-one -on -one life coaching and made a total profit of about $500. 500 bucks. <laughs> It's like not even enough to have dinner with John Maxwell, the places he hangs out at like five. So basically in an entire year, okay, I had hit what you guys in, in your language, I'd hit success club four in a whole freaking year, not in a month. Some of you have had months where you hit success club four and you were disappointed because you didn't make like the success club five mark that we like set for people. Right. And you're like, man, I'm such a failure. I didn't hit success club this month. I didn't hit success club for the year. <laughs> That's how horrible it was guys. It was horrible. But yet I'm on a call listening and learning. And I hear these words, protect momentum at all costs. I had no momentum, guys. Gosh, I longed for this thing that people had talked about called momentum. Whatever the heck it is, apparently it's like magical. In fact, John Maxwell says when momentum is on your side, you can like break through brick walls. When it's not on your side, every little thing that goes wrong is horrible. Now, I know that feeling. I know the feeling of not having momentum. When you don't have momentum, every little thing that goes wrong sucks. And I mean, it hurts bad, right? When you don't have momentum on your side, you get one extra bill for the month and you feel like someone cut your leg off, right? Because you were already trying to figure out which bills you weren't going to pay. And now an extra one shows up. And apparently this one's due next week, or they're going to start taking money out of your checking account. Oh, okay. So I guess I guess we need to add a list of the bills we're not paying this month because this one has to be paid, apparently. Anybody else ever had um, literally the government pull money out of your paycheck because you owed money? Yeah, that's, that's totally happened to me. I had no momentum. I had no idea what I was doing. But I tell you what I was doing. I was putting in every ounce of effort I knew how to. I was doing every single thing they told me to do, even when it wasn't working. They said, launch a mastermind group. It'll be great. What you do is you accumulate a group of people that want to learn and want to grow, and you go through a John Maxwell book together. And what you do is you read one chapter, like on your own time, and then you come together and you have like a group discussion. And it'll be great because you'll all be learning and growing together. And because you're kind of the mediator, by the end of the eight-week mastermind group, everyone will see you as the expert, and then they'll want to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I thought, yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, sit around and talk about John Maxwell books. I'm down. And then at the end of it, people pay you lots of money to work with you. Done. Yeah. I had a mastermind group. Guess how many people were willing to show up for my free mastermind group? Free. This is free. I'm giving free leadership training from the man, John Maxwell. I had three people show up. At the end of the eight weeks, you're supposed to use those people in your group to launch this awesome live event. Because if each of them will just invite like five or six people, man, you can like have a whole room full of people that then want to be in your next paid mastermind group. So you know what I did with these three people? I launched this huge epic live event, man. We got 15 people to show up in this room. Unfortunately, only one of them actually paid for my live event. The other 14 were free tickets that I gave away so that the one person who was willing to pay wouldn't feel really awkward when they showed up and it's just me and them. 14 people got free tickets. One person paid. And then they were like, and then you get to the live event. 
and you like have this awesome presentation and at the end of it, you offer what we call on the John Maxwell team, a killer offer. Now a killer offer is when you make a deal that is so good that people are just ready to buy and then you take it one step further and you make it such a good deal that they're like running to the back of the room. So l- let me walk you through how incredible my killer offer was because you need to, you need to hear this. I mean, this was just amazing. So we were going to launch a paid mastermind group that was eight weeks, okay? Eight weeks of leadership training for $200, okay? Now, first of all, that's like not even half of what I charge now. So it was a really good deal, 200 bucks. But because I'm really smart, I, I swear I'm a lot smarter than what my results were showing. I had my brother-in-law who is like this incredible baker. I had him bake a whole bunch of cookies for the event and we were giving them out for free at the door, like, like snacks. People could have like cookies. And then my other buddy who has this awesome local organic coffee shop, he, I got his coffee and we were serving his coffee. So you're like getting coffee and cookies, eating this and drinking this during the live event. Okay. I set this up so cleverly at the end. I say, here's the deal. If you sign up for the mastermind group, we're going to give you one free pound of that coffee that you've been enjoying and two dozen free cookies. Now, if you could taste these cookies, I'm telling you, there is no cookie on the planet. They are like big old thick, soft cookies. Like they could literally melt in your mouth. Okay. And everyone like, like this is okay. 200 bucks plus coffee plus cookies. Okay. Then my boss from the detail shop was there. Check this out. He stands up. He says, Josh, if anyone buys into your group tonight, I'll let them get a free gold detail. Now, here's the thing. Our gold details were $200. So if you signed up for my mastermind group for $200, you were going to get a $200 detail and eight weeks of leadership training and a pound of coffee and two dozen of like the best cookies in the world. I'm literally at this point paying you to come to my mastermind group. Do you know how many people signed up that night? Zero. (laughs) Not a single freaking person. I was so pissed off, guys. I like went home and I was like ready to punch stuff. I mean, it's like after, I don't know how many people played sports growing up, but like, you know, after you like lose the championship game, you go home and just like tear apart the house. Is that just me? Okay. I'm, I get really into sports. Um, I was so pissed off. What is wrong with these people? Why don't they care enough about themselves? Why don't they want to invest in leadership? Why don't they want to invest in growing? What is wrong with them? The next morning, I woke up with John Maxwell's words in my head. Law of the lid from the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership says this. You will never be more successful than your ability to lead people. Did you catch that? You will never be more successful than your ability to lead people. And I remember, Josh, there's nothing wrong with them. There's something wrong with you. I don't care how you killed the presentation. Sure. You had probably the most killer offer anyone has ever heard in their entire lives. Sure. But you have to keep working on you. Something's wrong with you, not with them. Something is wrong with you. And so I kept learning. I kept growing. I kept trying. I kept failing. Until one day, I realized the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma must hate my guts because no one in Tulsa, Oklahoma wants to work with me. I went to Facebook. I said, I'm just going to message people on Facebook. And I started sending out this message to every single person I could possibly find that said, hey, my name's Josh Coates. I'm on the John Maxwell team. And um, I'm giving out some free life coaching sessions. Wanted to see if you'd be interested in having a free chat with me to see if there's anything I can do to help you with your goals. And I just, I just sent it out to every person on the freaking planet. I'm pretty sure at one point, there was probably like a, some type of like email going around in the Beachbody community that said, 
there's this weird Josh Coates guy that's probably going to message you. Just ignore him. We don't know who he is or where he came from. He claims to be a part of the John Maxwell team. Do us a favor. Just block the guy and be done with it, okay? Because what happened is as I was messaging everyone, at some point, I noticed that the only people that ever messaged me back were people in network marketing. I don't know why. Apparently, everyone else hates me. It's cool. I don't care. Whatever. Network marketing people love me. And then through that, I found a girl by the name of Brittany Powers that maybe a few of you have heard of. She's a top 10 elite coach. And she decided to work with me. And then I got to speak on her team call. And then everyone on her call wanted to work with me. And then I said, Brittany, who do, you, who, who do you know that I should know? That's John Maxwell's famous question that he teaches us. Who do you know that I should know? And she introduced me to her mentor, Emma. And Emma introduced me to her success partner, Alexa. And Alexa passed me up to, and, and it just, and when it got to this point, guys, I remembered those words. Protect momentum at all costs. When I spoke on Brittany's team call, at the time I had five clients, okay? At this point, I was at like a year and five months into the business and had finally worked my way up to five clients. And I said, here's the thing. Anyone who's on this call tonight, anyone watching the recording, I will give you one free call. and We can chat about your goals. I ended up in that, from that night that I spoke for Brittany, over the next two months, I ended up giving away 30 free coaching sessions. That's a lot of hours for a guy that's also detailing cars all day and night and had three kids at the time and a wife, of course. She doesn't really, she doesn't really take as much attention as the kids though, as I'm sure you can imagine. She takes care of herself pretty well. And a lot of times me, 30 free sessions. And then you know what I did? I said, protect momentum at all costs. And I gave away more sessions. And then I said, protect momentum at all costs. And I launched a training group to help the people that couldn't get into my one-on-one -on -one sessions. I couldn't afford it. And then I protected momentum at all costs. So I created a follow-up training group for the people who signed up for the first one. And then I said to every single person I'm working with, who do you know that I need to know? And I spoke on more team calls. Guys, it has now been over a year since me and Brittany started working together. And I still speak on at least one team call every single week. Why? because I'm protecting momentum at all costs. Just two weeks ago, I hosted my own webinar. It was a post-summit momentum webinar. Was anybody on that? Anybody? No? Oh, that's awesome. So you guys are like all new people. This is great. And it was actually a, an idea from my buddy, Judd Welt, who uh, some of you have maybe worked out with in Hammer and Chisel. He's the guy that's kind of balding at the front, but he's super buff. And um, he said, dude, you should do a call after summit to help people take advantage of the momentum and turn it into something that will help their business. I said, man, I love that idea. I'm going to do that. We had 4,000 beach body coaches on a webinar. We actually broke Facebook. It was the coolest thing ever. Facebook couldn't handle it. I tried to just go live in the event page. I figured that would be fine. Like just go live. Everyone can see me. We broke Facebook. It couldn't handle it. There were so many people hopping on all at the same time and so many people commenting that Facebook just like exploded. I was like, maybe I had a bad connection. I got on, I tried it again, got back on Facebook. We blew it up again. It was literally the greatest marketing tactic I could have ever thought of if I had actually thought of it because everyone was posting. I mean, 4,000 people, Josh Coates just broke the internet. Oh my gosh. And, and it actually turned into like a publicity stunt, like I'd planned it or something. And we ended up still having, you know, like 4,000 views on the recording. I eventually took it to Google Hangouts on air. It was incredible. Why did this happen? Why? Because I kept protecting momentum at all costs. Some of you tonight, tonight, it's not tonight. I'm used to speaking at night. Some of you today have momentum. Some of you may be where I'm at now, where you're living life by design. I'm make more money a month now than what I used to make in a year. Some of you are where I was at a year ago where you've just started to get that momentum. Maybe you're just, I mean, maybe you like just hit diamond or starting to get close to diamond. 
The money is not really quite there yet, but you can feel it. You can feel it coming. And for the first time, you actually like kind of believe this whole thing that we've been trying to sell you forever. You're like, I think, I think maybe they were telling the truth. I think this is actually going to be worth it. And then some of you are where I was two and a half years ago, where you like maybe haven't even sold your first challenge pack yet. Or maybe you've signed two or three coaches, but they've all quit. And you're actually asking yourself every single day, is this actually worth it? And your spouse sees your paycheck on Thursdays and is kind enough to point out to you that you're making about 35 cents an hour for the kind of work and effort that you're putting in based on, on, on what you're making. And that's always pleasant, isn't it? To be faced with, oh, thank you. I, thanks for doing the math for me, babe. I kind of know that I'm sucking, but 35 cents an hour, I didn't realize it was that bad, right? And maybe even some of your friends and family are like, what's this whole beach body thing? Like, are you like a shake peddler now? Or like, what's, what's up with that? So you guys, so you, this, this is my favorite one. Cause I'm a beach body. Like I'm not a coach, but I love the products. <laughs> but it was one night we were like eating pizza or something with our family. Like, cause sometimes I eat real food, right? I'm a human. And, uh, and, and my brother's like, I guess you got to go drink a shake to make up for that. Don't you? <laughs> I'm like, what? That's the dumbest thing I've ever, no, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't drink a shake to like make up for like the shake doesn't take away calories that you ate. You freaking moron. Like people are just like, they love to like stab at you because you're doing something different. Right. And so tonight I want to give you three tips on how to build and protect momentum. And actually, I guess technically I'm going to give you a fourth tip because I didn't even realize this was a tip. But as it's coming out, I'm realizing one of the biggest problems in not just this business, but in human nature is we don't realize that we protect momentum the same way we built momentum. Did you hear that? We protect momentum the same way we build momentum. Now, this is Josh statistics. I'm about to drop some Josh statistics, okay? When I say Josh statistics, these are not proven. I've talked to thousands of Beachbody coaches, and in my opinion, these are the results that I've seen. 90% of people that go diamond never go star diamond. And I've seen this acted out at Super Saturdays. I travel around the country speaking at Super Saturdays every three months. And we always do these recognition things at the beginning, right? Stand up if you're a coach. Stand up if you're an emerald. Stand up if you're a diamond. Stand up if you're – and it's crazy to watch because when they say stand up if you're an emerald, probably, I don't know, 60% of the place will stand up. And then they'll say stand up if you're a diamond. Uh, I, I guess sometimes we say ruby, but a lot of times we don't even bring up ruby, do we? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. If, do we rec – I don't know. Anyways. So, so 60% stands up when we say emerald. Then we say diamond. And probably like 35% stands up. And eh, that's probably a little tainted. It's probably more like 70 and then 25. That's probably more like it, okay? And then the people that are left in the room that are one star and up make up maybe 5% of the entire room. Do you want to know why I think that is? This is, this is just my opinion. Because too many people know what it takes to get to diamond and aren't willing to continue doing what it takes to get to one star, two star, five star, 10 star, 15 star. In fact, I work with some people that are five stars that just to be quite honest, aren't willing to do what it takes to get to 10 star. And I've seen 10 stars that aren't willing to do what it takes to 15 star. Why? Because they don't understand the same way you protect momentum is the same way you originally built momentum. There is no break. There isn't. John Maxwell said, when I first started off, I asked myself, how, how long will it take? And the longer I went, I began to ask myself, how far can I go? Too many people asking this question. It's funny. I actually have this. I have two sticky notes, one on my left side of my desk, one on my right side of my desk to remind me of these simple things. Number one, success is in your daily routine. It's not something that happens this month. 
It's not something that happens this year. It's something that happens every single day, the compound effect. Some of you have heard of that, right? The compound effect. And then I have another sticky note over here that says focus on growth, the process, not the product. And the point of these two sticky notes is because I have 20 one-on-one -on -one clients. I have 600 people in training groups. And to constantly remind myself, Josh, stop trying to get your clients to succeed tomorrow. They don't. They're not going to succeed tomorrow. They're going to succeed when they understand their daily routine. Stop trying to get people to focus so much on the product or which is, you know, diamond, elite, whatever. Not that I'm against those things because I'm totally for goal setting. I love goal setting. But along with that comes focusing on the process. I can't tell you how many people have a goal to go elite and have no game plan to get there. In fact, some people, it's hilarious. They set these goals. I'm going to go elite this year. Okay, what are you doing differently than you did last year? Uh, I was just going to keep doing the same exact thing and hope that it produced 20 times the results. Oh, okay, because that makes sense. That makes a whole, yeah, that's great. If you want to go elite, just keep talking to two people a day. And I'm sure at some point you'll have a 100% conversion rate. Yeah, because that's how people get to top 10 is just talking to two people a day. And at some point there's like a lucky magic unicorn that shows up and like flicks some fairy dust on them. And all of a sudden everyone just wants to be around them and love them and buy challenge packs and sign up to be a coach with them. It's just that easy, guys. You just talk to two people a day and then magic happens. Now I have nothing against talking to two people a day, okay? Some of you who are just starting out, that's where you need to start off is talking to two people a day. But you also need to understand that the actions need to be in alignment with the goal. The whole point of the goal, and here, ah, okay, well, I'm gonna go, I have a whole other presentation for you guys we're about to go into, but I'll, I'll only go there for two minutes. The point of the goal is not to hit the goal. The point of the goal is to stretch you beyond your current ability. The point of the goal is for you to go, holy crap, the only way I'm going to reach that goal is if I step my ball game up right now. I made a goal at the beginning of the year. Has anybody ever heard of Lewis Howes? Raise your hand if you've heard of Lewis Howes. Okay, cool. I've just made two new best friends. So for those of you that don't know, Lewis Howes is to the entrepreneur world what Shalene Johnson is to the Beachbody world, okay? If you're in Beachbody, you sign up for every training Shalene puts out. If you're in the rest of the entrepreneur world, Lewis Howes is like the man, okay? Not to mention he's six foot four and is probably one of the most beautiful dudes on the planet is what women tell me. So apparently all the women love him anyways, right? So if you see him live, I'm sure you'll, you'll tell me all about him. At the beginning of the year, I said this goal. I said, I am going to show up in people's news feeds on Facebook as often as Lewis Howes. See, every single time I, yeah, they spelled it right. That's right, spelling Alice. Every single time I opened my phone or my computer, there was Lewis Howes in an ad staring right back at me. And I'm thinking, how does this guy do it? I mean, every time I get on the computer, I see this guy's face. And so I made it a goal. I don't know how. I, at the time, I didn't even know how to do Facebook ads. I think I'd messed around with them, but I didn't know much about it at all. I was not an expert by any means. I said, I'm going to have my face show up as often as his. Why? Because I knew it would stretch me to figure out, first of all, what the heck to do with Facebook ads. Second of all, it would, if I could get my face in front of that many people, there's no way I could not be successful, right? Right? You can't have 5 million people a day see your face and not somebody want to sign up for your trainings. Now, am I anywhere near that goal? No. But I bet you if you are a beach body coach that's a female between the ages of 25 and 35 that likes Shalene Johnson, Shanti, Team Beachbody, Carl Dykler, or John Maxwell, you've probably seen one of my ads. Because my art of recruiting ad right now has 1.6 thousand likes and 900 comments. 
Now you can't get 1.6 thousand likes and 900 comments without making a few sales. In fact, that one ad now makes as much money as my old full-time job used to make. Just an ad. I don't even respond to it. My assistant does that for me. What's the point of my story? I'm still nowhere near Lewis Howes, guys. But I set a goal that forced me in to massive action to push for something. Will I actually hit that goal this year? I have no idea, but man, I'm sure going to try. I'm sure going to try. The goal is not about the goal. It's about stretching yourself beyond your limits. Okay, so now let's get to my actual presentation because that was all extra. If you want to build momentum or protect momentum, here's the three things you got to do. Number one, you got to show up every day. Write that down. Show up every day. Number one issue I see with beach body coaches posting all over Facebook and Instagram, stuff like this. Next time you say you don't have time to work out, try saying instead it's not a priority. Has anybody ever posted something like that? Or everyone has time to work out. It's just a matter of do you make the time? Am I right? You don't have to be a rock star to get in shape. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do this, right? Right? Anyone. And then it comes time for our business. And I hear things like this. I just don't have time to work my business. How many, how many times have you heard someone say that, Bridget? I won't even ask you to actually be honest. I'll just let you. <laughs> She's probably heard it a million times. I'm just not motivated. I don't know what's wrong. I just can't seem to find motivation. Like motivation is something that's like buried at the end of a rainbow that you have to go dig up. I can't find motivation. Apparently it's missing. <laughs> I don't know who hit it, but I can't find it. Or <sighs> apparently only certain people, just the rock stars can become successful at this business. All of the same crap you get pissed at other people for saying about the health journey is all the same crap you say about the business. And the truth of the matter is, if I were to ask Bridget, if I were to ask Brittany, if I were to ask Melissa McAllister, if I were to ask anyone in this company that's had a huge amount of success, they would all agree that there was nothing special about them. They didn't have some trick to motivation. They showed up every freaking day. They made time. Most of them have families. They made time. They made motivation. How do you make motivation? I don't know. I got a coffee pot in there. I got some energize in there. I've got some energy boost that I can mix in with my Shakeology. I have headphones where I can play loud music. There's a hundred million ways to make motivation. You just don't want to be motivated. That's all there is to it. You just don't want to. Now, I didn't want to work either, guys. Just got done detailing cars all day. I got three kids that wanted to play with me. Got a lot of other stuff going on. But I said, Josh, do you want to play with your kids now or build the life of their dreams and spend the rest of your life playing with them? Took my kid to soccer practice last night. Showed up in my own pair of soccer shoes, ready to play if they would let me. They, they wouldn't, unfortunately. But I was ready to go, man. I'm not thinking about money anymore. Money's not on my mind. I don't got a day job. Oh, I don't know if I can take you to practice tonight, son, because I got to detail cars tomorrow. I might not have the energy if I take. I don't worry about that crap. Now, do I still work hard? Absolutely. But when you work hard doing what you love, man, it's a totally different ballgame. You've got to ask yourself, and this is, this is a hard question, guys. Okay, so I hope you're okay with some truth bombs tonight because it's about to get real, okay? We had some fun, but now it's time to get real. If you're not willing to show up every day and do the things you know you need to do, here it comes. Do you really love your family? Do you? Now, you... you you tell your kids, you, you tell your kids you'd do anything in the world for them. 
I don't know about you guys, but I would run into a burning building for my kids and I wouldn't care if I burned to death. I'd do it for them, right? And yet most of you will not do one power hour to create the life that your children deserve. You'll run into a burning building for them. You will go through physical torture, but at the end of the day, you're not willing to challenge your emotions. Just like your health journey, the business journey is an emotional challenge every single day because there's voices in here that say, you can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not fun enough. What if it never works? Oh my gosh, you're such a terrible mom. Oh my gosh, you're such a terrible dad. Oh my gosh, you're such a terrible spouse. Oh my gosh, all of these voices flooding your head trying to talk you out of doing the thing you know you should be doing. And you listen to those voices instead of listening to the voice of what does your family deserve? I had all the same voices, guys. I promise you it was not easy, especially after one year of working my butt off and making $500. But I said, my family deserves it. I'm going to figure it out. Number two, do the right things. Number one, you got to show up every day. But man, there's a lot of people showing up every single day doing all the wrong crap. Can I just, can I just tell you guys something? Can I fill you in on something? It doesn't matter if you use turquoise or purple or pink on your post. Stop spending two hours in Rona Design, Canva, and Word Swag and get out there and freaking talk to somebody. I'm just being real right now, guys. Nobody's buying challenge packs because you should. Well, I think maybe a lighter purple would be better. Maybe, hmm, I don't know, maybe this fuchsia would work. Now, Sean, I, you may not be struggling so hard with, with that part of the business. I know we got a, a lot of ladies. I like to tease them about using too many purples and pinks and turquoises. But my point is this. Businesses are built on talking to people, not posting. And I have nothing against posting. I do it every single day. But I do not spend the majority of my time posting. This is my opinion. Again, this is Josh statistics. I could be wrong. In my opinion, eight out of 10 beach body coaches are not doing the only profitable vital behavior. It's called invite, invite, invite. We love to be a product of the product, although, you know, sometimes we struggle with that because we're human. Most of us actually love personal development, although some people slack on that too. But, you know, we got these awesome things called audiobooks we can listen on the go. But none of those things are as scary as the thought of saying, would you like to join my next challenge group? Right? Why is that? Because it's the only thing that you have to worry about rejection. Now, you say things like, I don't know what to say. Bullcrap. You say things like, I don't have time. You say things like, well, I know how to start the message, but I just don't know how to like transition it into the actual invite. Bullcrap. The only thing on your mind is you are afraid of rejection. I'm just calling it how I've seen it. You are scared to death that someone's going to block you, that someone's going to say mean and nasty things to you, that someone's going to say no, or here's the worst one, they will totally ignore you and not say anything at all. Which is funny to me. Sorry, I got to fly in here. Just funny to me because my perspective was like, if they ignore me, I don't even have to have a conversation. So, like I just got bailed out. They literally just bailed me out. But too many of you see it like this. Well, they ignored me. They must be offended. They must, there must be something wrong. They must take my guts. Oh my gosh, they're probably talking about me behind my back. And you draw up these huge conclusions 
based on these invites because sorry here comes another one i'm sorry guys please don't hate my guts please because at the end of the day you care more about what people on facebook or instagram think of you than how much your family thinks of you i'm just saying it how it is guys it isn't it's not very nice is it i'm a horrible human being you should all hate me right now but this is truth now, 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 emotionally, it doesn't feel like that. But can we just remove emotions for a second and use logic? Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not usually that great with logic. I'm more of an emotional dude. I, you know, played in rock bands. I was the songwriter. I'm an emotional dude. But we need to use logic here for a second. Logically speaking, I've got 5,000 friends on Facebook. I don't know, 6,000 people on my like page, 6,000 people on my Instagram, probably a couple thousand more on my YouTube. Do any of those people matter more than my wife and my now four kids? Any of them? Any of them? Absolutely not. So I don't really care how many of those people I had to piss off to create the life I really wanted because the whole time it was about them, not about me. Were there people who didn't like me along the way? I'm sure there were. I mean, how can, how can someone not like it? The dude that's messaging every beach body coach on the planet saying, Hey, I'm on the John Maxwell team. I now work with Brady Powers and Emma Owen would love to give you a free consultation. If you'd be interested, like see if there's anything I can help you with, with your goals. I sent that message to probably 200 beach body coaches. Why? Because I was just trying to find people to talk to. Now, I had a desire to help those people. And that's why I was okay with spamming people because I knew my intent was not to necessarily use them for money. My intent was to help them reach their goals and live a better life. I had six different clients last year that went elite for the very first time. Was that worth a couple people that got pissed off at me? Absolutely. I have coaches that were making 50000 a year last year that are now making six figures. Their whole life has changed. I have, other, I, I have one coach who, man, she stuck with me, man. She wasn't even an Emerald coach yet, and she always says she's like the turtle coach. She moves at a very slow pace. I stuck with her, though. I didn't drop her. I stuck with her, and I've never raised her prices. She hasn't even gone diamond yet. But she's this close to going diamond, and I'm so proud of her because if I wouldn't have been there, I don't know if she'd have been willing to stick out this journey because I kept kind of like poking at the turtle and telling the turtle to take a couple more steps. Some of my coaches, yeah, Brittany Powers hit top 10. Would she have hit top 10 without me? I think so personally. She won't say that, but I do. But I do believe that I was a support system on the way to that top 10. I believe that there were some things that I helped her do that maybe she wouldn't have done. My point is this. If you have a desire to help people, you should never, ever, ever feel bad about the fact that some people are going to get pissed off at you. Because you have a family that deserves a better life. And as long as you're doing something that has integrity and helps people, okay? Who gives a crap if people hate your guts? I mean, who cares? I don't know. I might walk into Target tomorrow and some mom might look at me and say, I'm a beach body coach and I hate your guts because you messaged me a year ago. And I would say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it, but you know what? Um, my family has a way better life and I help a lot of people now. So you can go hate me. There are some people that do. That's life, guys. People are going to hate you no matter what you do. In fact, I always tell people, if you desire to make any type of difference in the world at all, you're going to have some haters. That's just all there is to it. But let me ask you this. Do you love your family? I see somebody holding their kiddo right now. It's the coolest thing ever. She's at home right now with her kiddo. Now think about the life you want for that kiddo. I don't know about you guys. I've told my kids, you're not allowed to go to college 
and get $200,000 worth of debt unless you find a passion that college is going to help you fulfill. Other than that, you're all going to be entrepreneurs. You're going to live life by design at the age of 18. My kids in high school are going to be creating their own businesses. They're not going to have to have $200,000 in college debt. They're not going to depend on the government. They're not going to go to some crappy job getting underpaid and underappreciated. My kids are going to have life by design from like 15 years old. Why? Because I love them and I want them to have the absolute best. But the only way I can provide them with the absolute best is if I'm willing to chase and do whatever it takes to get the best. You can't give your kids something you don't already have, guys. So many people saying, okay, kids, you can do whatever you want. You can live the life of your dreams. Nothing is impossible. Meanwhile, you settle for something way below your dreams. And you think that because you tell them to chase their dreams that they will. But the truth is, people don't do what you say, they do what you do. That's one of the number one leadership lessons. People don't do what you say, they do what you do. You want your kids to chase their dreams? You better be out there chasing your dreams. And you may fail and you may never reach it. Oh well, at least you taught them what it looks like. Okay, I'll get off that one for a bit. I might, be, I, might be, I might be going a little too far on the whole kid thing. But man, it's something that goes deep in my heart because I love my kids more than anything. Number three, you ready for this one? I'll, try to, I'll take it easy on you guys. I won't, I, won't, I won't drop any horrible truth bombs on you this time. Is that okay? <laughs> Number three, surround yourself with the right people. Jim Rohn says you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Guys, you cannot chase your dreams surrounded by a bunch of people who settle for less. If you want to be a greater than average person, you better surround yourself with greater than average people. I just came back from Orlando where I got to spend a whole week with, with John Maxwell and the rest of the team. And he, and he talked about downhill thinkers and uphill thinkers. And he, basically what he said was downhill thinking leads to downhill actions. And uphill thinking leads to uphill actions. And at the end of the day, we get, we reap what we sow. Our actions lead us to our results. And I love what he said. He's like, guys, you, you, can't, you can't be spending your time with a bunch of downhill thinkers because downhill thinkers have downhill actions and downhill actions, guess what, have downhill results. Uphill is not easy. Think about this for a second. What, what's harder, to slide down a hill or to climb up a hill? It's a lot harder to climb up that hill, isn't it? which is why you got to surround yourself with people on the same journey. Because if you surround yourself with people that are sliding down the hill, they're always trying to knock you off that hill and take you with them. If you surround yourself with climbers, they're always reaching out their hand trying to help you climb. If you want what you really deserve, and that's everything you have on your heart, you're going to have to surround yourself with awesome people like Bridget. You're going to have to surround yourself with your team. You're going to have to surround, man, you find a way to get on team calls. I mean, obviously all of you did today. Find a way to consistently show up on team calls. Find a way to get on the national wake up call. Find a way to get to live events. Find a way to get to super Saturdays. Find a way to get to summit. Find a way to get to anything you can to get closer to successful people that will bring your average up, that will bring your thinking up, bring your acting up, bring your living up. You got to do it. So thank you guys so much for hopping on with me today. I hope, I hope my truth bombs inspired you to go do something. And I hope I didn't uh, blow you up. Hopefully you guys got some things that you know you need to go do. I, I, I want to challenge everyone on here, everyone, 
to write down your top three takeaways of things you're going to do. Okay. Don't give me this. Oh my gosh, it blew my mind. I mean, I hope it blew your mind, but, uh, but give me your top three action steps. Okay. I want you to post them on social media and tag me in them. Okay. Top three action steps. What are you going to do differently because of what you heard today? I hope you're going to talk to some people, man. I better see like every single one better say something about talking to people or talking to more people. Okay. Stop hiding in the shadows and get out here and change some lives. All right. Bridget, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Josh. I've had people sending me private messages here. I myself have my three pages of notes awesome. and awesome. learned so much from this. And even just how you worded it, I'm like, yes, you know, <laughs> this is exactly what it takes. So we have been so honored. I feel like we got a huge treat in having you come and get on this call today. And I love it, guys. If you guys want to post on team pages, sharing your takeaways, I know that more people will listen to uh, the recording of this, which they deserve. And you can share this with your team. I'll post it, the YouTube link in our team pages here shortly. And thank you again so much, Josh. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys.